We've got some transfer news to talk about in this episode. Uh, last episode, of course, we lost in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. Uh, we will kick off in the FA Trophy today. Uh, and we've hit kind of a skid in recent games. So we'll talk about that too. But we do have transfer news to talk about. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode six of our Football Manager 21 uh, Youth Academy and Director of Football Save with Tiverton Town. Taking a look, we are in the white kits. This is highlights against Slough, and there is a shot from Bailey, I believe. Yes, Carl Bailey, and he gets the goal there. Wilkins plays it across to White, and he takes a crack at goal, and Grant makes a horrible read on that. Probably should have been a save, but that made it Tiverton 2, Slough nil. Williams bringing it down, crosses it in, and it's Cook putting it in the back of the net to make it 3 0, and that would be the final score. They did outshoot us 16 to 14, and they had possession, but we made our chances count. Murphy, eight saves and two interceptions, only 55% pass completion but it's nice to see the goalkeeper getting there 20 games into life at tibby and my bid to overhaul the first team squad at ladies mead is well underway with no fewer than seven players arriving on free transfers general positive reaction to his tactical approach all right so let's take a quick look don't forget you know, I got to put out the uh, the information, hit the like button, subscribe for daily football manager content, yada, yada. Let's get into it. So after last match, we lost to Torquay 5-3 to in the fourth qualifying round. Uh, we beat East Thurrock 1-0 with a bliss Cotterill goal. Graham Williams put in a goal for a 1-0 win over Chelmsford. But then we suffered a pair of losses. Uh, we scored two goals in each, but we conceded eight combined. And that's, uh, that's unusual, but you know we've given up three to five goals several times in recent memory. Uh, Weston Supermare, uh, uh, Weston, we'll go with that. Uh, five to two defeat, and then we, we took a two nil lead in the opening 10 minutes. Bliss Cotterell and Grant Wilkins scored. But then we gave up three unanswered goals, uh, including the game winner in the 84th minute, and uh, that one got away from us. And we just saw that we beat Slough uh, three nil. So competition wise, we are fourth, right in the heart of the playoffs, uh, five points clear of Maidstone uh, out on the outside looking in, and four points south of Billericay in uh, the automatic promotion spot. Last episode, we did kind of look at how the playoffs work. I have no idea. I don't remember. Uh, so we'll figure that out when we get there. Uh, but let's take a look at transfers. So last episode, we talked about uh, Jack Evans. We had gotten a bid and the board accepted it. And I tried to get them to change their mind and they didn't. Uh, well, Jack, to his credit, refused uh, the contract. Uh, he wanted to stick around, and that was good. But I think it was because the club was at our level, uh, because then we got a bid from Barnett, and uh, he, the board again took that bid, and Jack has accepted that and has departed the club for a $17,000 fee. The biggest problem I had... I knew they were going to accept these bids at this point, but they didn't do any add-ons. And when it came time, when the bid was accepted by the board, the only option I had to combat this was to ask them to put in some add-ons. And they told me no, that they didn't feel his value was going to go up anymore. And uh, so, yeah, he has gone. We do get 17000 into our transfer budget. We brought in two new players. Uh, last episode, you saw we brought in uh, Rudy Haycock. Uh, he is a veteran uh, striker for depth. 
Justin Bone, new left back, David Tierney, a new center back, and we have brought in a pair of left wingers, young players, Ricky Skinner from Enfield Town and Danny Granger from Hendisford. Uh, Ricky can play anywhere on that left side from the, you know, in the defensive third up to the attacking third on the left wing. He is also working on the attacking right wing. Now, I've mentioned Sean Murphy. He's one of my subscribers and a friend of mine. Uh, he's the one that got the, uh, the, the kits and uh, logo into the game for me for Tiverton. But he has told me uh, his philosophy for managing, because he does a lot of lower league management uh, on his personal save. And so he told me, he says, hey, give this a try. I said, okay. Uh, so we know that when you're looking at players at this level, they're not going to be quality, right? They're just not going to be. Most of them are going to be shit. Uh, and, you know, this guy's got a three in heading. It's pretty shit. But Sean said, hey, when I'm doing lower league, I feel, you know, you, you have a hard time developing them because you don't have great facilities or what have you. So he spends a lot of time. He, he goes after high mental players, specifically determination. Nothing less than a 12, according to him. So this guy kind of fits into that mold, doesn't have the pace that I like, although he does have the acceleration. Uh, he can't walk without falling over, basically, but uh, he's very determined. So we'll, uh, you know, and he actually has average crossing first touch. So, you know, he's got some benefits going on. Two-star current, four-star potential. We'll see how he works out. The other player we brought in was Danny Granger. He's 22 years old, two-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. Uh, very similar. He can play on the left side. Uh, he's also <clears throat> makeshift at left back and central mid, so we can possibly train him in a couple of those positions. Uh, he actually is average pace. But again, he's got that 12 determination and he's got some higher ratings, flair, leadership off the ball. He can actually pass the ball decently. Uh, and his technicals for his position out here aren't horrible. So we'll see how that works out. So those are the two new players that we have brought in. And we also have an offer out on another striker in Rico Etherington. Uh, 24 years old from Cheltenham, Cheltenham, uh, Cheltenham uh, and that'll be for a free as well. Competition-wise, we are now fourth coming off that Slough victory, uh, 33 points. We're four points off of Billericay at the top of the table for automatic promotion, and we are five points clear of Maidstone sitting on the outside of the playoff grouping. So let me get up to the next match which will be against Wieldstone, and we'll get that one played out here on camera. So we're going to put Murphy in goal. We've got a back four of Bone, Hemmings, Bea, and Macaulay. Oh, I don't want to play that tactic. Why are you doing that? All right, Murphy in goal, a back four of Bone, Hemmings, Bea, and Macaulay. Uh, midfield of Simmons and Bissex, Wilkins, and Bliss Cotterill on the wings. Cook and Williams up top. Tierney's just back from international duty, and so he's a little out of it. Uh, we'll have him on the bench for coverage, but otherwise, uh, he probably will not play. McCauley's still looking for match fitness, and again, he's starting. He's not the best right back, but I am really having issues with uh, Sloan, who has moved over to right back with Bones' arrival. Let's go ahead and give some encouragement. We are in our yellow kits. And we have a corner. Cook lays it in. Oh, that was going into the goal, other except for the guy sitting on the line because the keeper wasn't there. Five shots, three on target here in the opening 25 minutes. Oh, taken down in the box. Wilkins was just clattered. And Williams is going to step up for the penalty attempt. And he slots it home. That is number 22 on the season for our striker, Graham Williams. We've also gone in, and uh, because most of the contracts expired at the end of this season, 
We have extended a lot of those contracts for one more year. Four ball out. Oh my goodness, and he was just completely unmarked. Sixth goal of the season. Not sure uh, what happened there defensively. Just across into the box, and we did a poor job. Looks like it was McCauley. He just drifted too far off of him and then let him go right past him. All right, well, that's what I get for starting that guy. I think I have to take the heat for that. And you can see a 6-3 rating and dropping fast. Murphy with the sure hands. That was a nice header. Had a little power on it. Uh, Walker cuts inside Wilkins and takes it away. I thought we had something developing there. A deep ball into the corner. And it goes back post to Matt Walker, his fourth of the season. And we need to do a little bit better here. Bone on the left side playing a 6-3. So, yeah. Fullbacks are not doing their job. All right, I have made one change. We brought James Sloan in. We have also changed Sloan and Bone to fullbacks on defend. Let's demand more here. All right, take it away, Sloan. Oh, that was a... That was ugly. That was a bad clearance. And that gets in past Sloan, but Murphy makes the save. So we got a little lucky there. Header goes up into the empty stands. And Grant Wilkins is dragging. Let's look at bringing him off. Uh, let's see. Well, Bliss Cotterell. Do I have anybody? Well, Lee White, he can play right and left. Let's bring him on to the left side. He is right-footed, so we will make him a uh let's make him an inside forward. Let's do that. Let's demand more again. All right, we've got Bone with the throw in. There's White. Uh, look at the clearance out to Walker, and he is off to the races. Bea does not come off of his man. Good save, and Sloan does a really good job clearing it. Poor pass back by Williams. Bissix can't make the play. And we are back on our back foot again. Oh, my God. Hemmings almost walks it into the net. All right. Uh, one more sub here. We've got a couple of guys tired. Uh, I don't sub off center backs, really. I don't really have anybody that I can play over there, do I? Oh, so we're we're just going to have to see this one out, I'm afraid. All right, nothing going on here. Back up. And the header down. Boy, that looked professional. 17th goal of the season. And that's, yeah, I think they're right. That's going to have to clinch it three to one. Look at that. A first touch, just the little drop header. That was brilliant. You, uh, you can't do that at this level, man. Or at least we can't. Three minutes of stoppage time. Cook launches one. Nothing's there. Bay is tracking back. Sloan back in, nothing going on. A lot of space out there for Walker. Look at the give and go passing. Oh my goodness. I don't have any players on my team that can do that. <laughs> Nobody. I'm wondering 
Oh, Williams got stomped, but no foul. We must be playing Man United. I don't know if you guys have noticed in the Premier League that when Man United plays the um, the referees, you know, they have the Premier League patch, but they also have a really small Man United patch uh, on their on their referee jersey. Got to look real close, but it's there. Uh, yeah, they really dominated us in the second half. That was uh, that was not good. No, we're not doing that. Far from pleased. Far from pleased. So they, they're in the same division as us. They're in 10th. So, eh, no real complaint. So I guess that's okay. Well, I don't think we have any cup action to worry about anymore. Uh, but we do have a long slate of games. God, some of these leagues have so many matches. November's been a month to forget with three losses. So let's come back. Let's come back for Maidstone and, well, maybe not. Let's come back for, all right, we'll come back for Truro highlights and then we'll play pool on camera. That'll give us another good run of games, but not too many. And that'll get us into the first of the year. And I believe the transfer window opens again, although we may not even have to. I've been signing players on freeze, so I don't know if there is an actual transfer window at this level. Well, guys, hit the like button. Subscribe to stay up to date for daily Football Manager content. Hopefully, we can pull out of this funk, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.